What is up guys, KFC back here with another war recap video. Uh, this one against Venezuela Farm. And unfortunately, this one did not go our way. Defeat 88 to 89 at the hands of Venezuela Farm. Um, but hopefully we don't use this as a demotivating war. Um, obviously we knew what the situation was kind of early on in war day. And I was just really proud of the effort that a fair play clan showed to kind of have the pride to clear the Town Hall 9s. Um, and we kind of had a shot at the end to, to possibly sneak away with it. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't go our way. Um, so just heads up to, to everyone. Uh, it was a really good war. Obviously, they threed uh, Tread Easy um, with one of their Town Hall 10 attacks. They did leave one Town Hall 9 base up. And then for us, we got a once Tread Easy uh, put a good attack in on the enemy one. And then we cleared all the Town Hall 9s. Uh, overall, my impression of the war uh, was that it was it was pretty good, um, just in terms of the process. Uh, a couple of things that we can kind of talk about as a clan. Uh, we did have to use Son of Jay, who, while not necessarily a full Town Hall 10 yet, uh, did have access to uh, five spells. And so it would have been nice to clear the Town Hall 9s uh, without the use of Son of Jay. Um, but he did go ahead and nab two of those for us. So I think in total they had, uh, I want to say it's a go three all the way down to 22. So 19 Town Hall 9s so was 30. Uh, so 19 Town Hall 9 attacks. And then we had three through 23 as well. So basically um, almost took us two attacks per defense to kind of grab the enemy. A couple, unfortunately, just got away from us. And uh, so base four is definitely one. I'm going to try and record a separate video for that base in particular, um, just because the first attack on that base was a 94% uh, one star by LT with Downy Hero, and then there were three Town Hall 9 attacks after that that couldn't quite get that last 6% despite having both heroes. Uh, so mistakes like that uh, can cost us, and so having those extra few Town Hall 9 attacks might have been able to uh, kind of help Treadwell out kind of with the death of a Town Hall 10 type. Uh, series. Uh, so ultimately, base four is kind of the kind of the, the biggest downside to this war. A couple of other bases kind of got away from us. Base nine there had to be eventually taken out by Son of Jay despite three attacks by us. Uh, base 11 took four hits. I'd say any time that we get past the two, we really have to look at what was it uh, that didn't quite go right in those first couple of attacks. We did clear a couple of the bases, as you can see up here, base 15, base 10, Eight, seven, six, all those got threed on first hit, which is always fantastic. Um, anytime you can avoid kind of having a curvy number, uh, good things are happening for the clan. Uh, but once you get to three, that's where it starts getting concerning. So there were a few of those, even down here, base 22, uh, when pigs fly, I think it had a AQ 11, BK 11, and somehow that took us uh, three hits as well. Uh, I think one of those was a scout attack, but the, the attack after that, you know, we just need to need to be better. Uh, Town Hall 8s all pretty much got taken out in short order, um, so great job to the Town Hall 8s, and good job scouting kind of up top. Uh, so going to go ahead and kind of recap this war, uh, because it was an anti-3 war, I'm going to just recap as many as I can until I get tired of talking, uh, so this might be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, we've already taken a, a real hard look at base 3 in, our, in one of our other series about tacking up Town Hall levels, so I don't think we need to any... You don't need to spend any more time uh, staring at that base. Uh, base 4, I'm going to try and do a separate video on that one. So let's go ahead and start with base 5 and an attack by Danny. A lot of these attacks are going to be relatively fresh to me, uh, so forgive me as I go. Looks like Danny's bringing a D's Nuts type attack. Uh, two bolts and a quake, two rage and a haste. So he gets his minions down there at 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock, and all the way up there at 10 o'clock. So just a great scout by Dan, even picking off that cannon. That was incredible. Um, Going to get a nice wide funnel, kind of wherever he comes in. Drops the earthquake on the air defense that's in the queen compartment. Takes that out relatively easily, and then I assume he's going to do a queen walk here, starting at around 6 o'clock, um, and nab a bunch of those air defenses. And this is a tactic that um, our opponent used uh, as well. Um, to grab a lot of our bases. So you see Danny here starting actually closer to around 4 or 5 o'clock. Uh, drops an early rage for his healers. She was going to come in rage, uh, in range, excuse me, of three pieces of point defense. 
Uh, in go the wall breakers under rage opens up the nice compartment there. That's going to give him access to two of the remaining air defenses. Um, I assume that there is a lava hound in the clan castle and that's going to come in at the second or the, excuse me, the final air defense. Uh, King goes down. Actually, he's going to grab that air defense. So basically all of the air defenses are going to go down. Um, and this is kind of a pattern that we noticed with our bases as well. If you can zap quake one air defense and then use both your heroes to nab two others. Always fantastic values. So at this point of the raid, all of the air defenses are down. All the dragons are going down near the AQ compartment. I'm very curious what is in that clan castle. If it's another dragon, uh, some more balloons maybe. It could just be a lava hound as well just in case. Um, that's kind of an added benefit in my mind to this style of attack. Um, if you don't get one of the air defenses, you can just kind of, there you go, deploy the Lava Hound to just do some tanking. And so that Lava Hound is going to tank some Teslas uh, up here in near 12 o'clock. Uh, the Hay Spell goes down to propel those loons into the Teslas. And uh, overall, just a really, really great plan, a really, really great attack. Um, definitely kind of impressed with the kind of the, the legs that this attack can kind of have on it. Like I said, heaven forbid you had a wall breaker failed down there at 6 o'clock. I think you could have easily seen uh, that Lava Hound go in down there with the loons. Um, it looks like he brought a lot of wall breakers. I think he just planned to have maybe a wall breaker fail. He did need to def he definitely needed to get into this compartment, so maybe better safe than sorry uh, to bring those wall breakers. But at this point, it looks like there are just two expos up, an archer tower, and he's got plenty of dragons to do a cleanup. Um, I was zooming in and out, so I'm not sure how his queen died. Um, probably just came in range of too many point defense, and ultimately this base is going to be cleaned up pretty easily. There is a corner builder hut. Absolutely devastating to bring a million wall breakers, uh, but not bring one archer for the lonely builder hub all the way up. I'm going to force us to watch it. Look at that. I'm going to pause right there. We got 98%. Looks like as soon as this goes down here. So we have taken out 99% of the base, and it's going to take us 24 seconds to kill that builder set. And so that is just, it could be absolutely devastating. Um, in a three and a half minute long attack, anytime that you're bringing some sort of an AQ walk, you never know how long that's going to take. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to force us to watch this in one X speed. I'm going to zoom in nice and close. We're going to watch this dragon here. It's a race between the dragon and the wizard. I do believe the dragon will beat the wizard to the final builder set. We are going to see poor wizard can only see the fate of the builder set as it gets ready to get destroyed and down it goes i know it only takes one breath of a dragon as opposed to 10 shots of an archer but when you're bringing eight wall breakers just bring seven bring an archer you get to avoid kevin speeches and so far we've spent probably five minutes now on this attack i could have skipped ahead to another attack by now good attack danny bring that corner archer all right Let's go to the next one uh, by Graveland. Haven't seen him around in a while, so happy to have him back with us. Uh, I have a little bit of a delay here on my screen. There we go. All right, so Graveland looks like he's bringing in an AQ charge with five healers. Um, pretty good anti-3 base, lots of different things. Uh, let's see how he takes this one out. Uh, I do see a lot of lack of point defense kind of on the right side. I assume that the queen walk might go down somewhere over there to negate a lot of those uh, double spots. So the queen, the minions go up down near 12 o'clock. Uh, great scouts with these minions guys, kind of picking off buildings and getting really big, wide funnels. Uh, five minions and wizard go down. Even the, oh, there's the archer queen. She's down. She's got all five healers on her. Uh, got a nice funnel created to the right. Unfortunately, that wizard is going to go down before that spell factory does, but the damage is done. The queen's going to start walking. Uh, nice giant there to get the test wall breaker down. And then finally, two other wall breakers go down. So that was really nice. In the face of two pieces of splash damage, uh, Grave had the ability to kind of break into this compartment here. And he's going to get a very good value for this queen walk. Uh, should walk now into this compartment and then take out even this enemy archer queen. He has brought two rages, um, so you should ultimately consider that. Uh, two get out of jail free cards is the phrase that I like to use to describe it. Um, I assume that both rages are for his archer queen and healers. Uh, so he's going to handle the uh, the enemy clan castle and the enemy barbarian king and the enemy AQ as well as an expo all here. So I assume that we're going to see a rage go down sooner rather than later. There goes the first rage on the AQ. Going to take out the dark elixir storage and then those healers are going to step up into the rage right there. Uh, take out that gold mine and now his queen unfortunately is doing a lot of work on storages first before she gets into this very high... Um, 
kind of risky area. Poison goes down on the enemy CC troops. Just barely missed it, though. Uh, that queen didn't quite uh, get caught by it. Uh, Expo goes down. Archer Tower goes down. Getting a great, great value for this walk. Um, second, like I said, this was the second rage. King goes down, and now the queen has basically um, an open area. So this, guys, is the time that you want your queen to be engaged with a lava hound. There's no other defenses that are targeting your queen. You don't have to worry about popping her ability. You can be nice and patient, and also start the second phase of your attack, which Graveland is going to do uh, from the two o'clock compartment. Uh, so once again, nice wall breaker game goes down, gets everything into that compartment. Uh, King's going to go down and knock out that spell factory. Golem gets out nice in front uh, to kind of tank that cannon. He might run into an issue here with the Expo targeting the King first. Indeed, the Expo and the Teslas are going to target the King, so he's going to have to pop that ability maybe sooner than he would have liked. Possible that you could have waited a little bit, possible to wait a little bit longer um, on, your, on your King drop. Um, you can kind of wait for the Golem to beat through that first kind of layer of defenses before you drop your King, because uh, ultimately that Golem's doing no tanking right now. King's taking all of the damage. Uh, so that King is going to go down, and then the Golem's going to provide some, some back-end tanking. So just a little bit of a different style in terms of what does the tanking win. Uh, but ultimately, here go all the Hogs. Scary-ish spot here for a potential double, but ultimately it looks like... All the hogs are up. There's not even a double there anyway. So all is well. Has roughly 20 hogs left up. Absolutely beautiful attack. Beautiful AQ walk. Um, just a very, very well planned attack. Um, knew that he only needed two heals for his hogs. Um, got tremendous value from that AQ walk and those rages. Swags his poison on the clan castle. Um, it's the pro Kevin anti Pico thing to do. Uh, so whenever you have a swag spell, know that Pico is rooting against it. I'm rooting for it. Good job, Graveland, hitting that three-star. All right, let's go to the next base. we got Albert getting taken out by Nick. And it looks like Nick is going to bring a D's Nuts style of attack as well. Um, so anytime I'm starting to see this now, I'm just going to start planning for where uh, would I kind of, what one are you bolting and which one are you going in at? Given the range of this sweeper here, I might assume that he's going to bolt this one and then try and break in uh, kind of in this big long compartment here to kind of nab all three air defenses. It's kind of the first kind of initial thing that I would see um, just from what I know about this attack style. Uh, so let's see how Nick does it. He's going to start off once again. Uh, great job, guys, with the minions. That's something that I'm seeing on a lot of these top town hall nine bases. You guys getting um, these minions down early, creating those funnels. Queen gets down nice and early, gets going. Uh, already has the funnel on the left created for her. The other minion is down working on the right, uh, getting tremendous value there. And it looks like, indeed, the queen is going to be responsible for these three air defenses. Kind of that really big, long compartment. Um, almost an AQ charge as opposed to an AQ walk. Um, great wall breaker game. Nice and patient with his wall breakers. Make sure that all of the point defense is targeting uh, the AQ. Uh, two Teslas pop. That's absolutely kind of instant. I need to burn a rage. So I'm not sure if this was a cleanup attack or not. Uh, but it looked like he, he was surprised by it. So this might have been a fresh hit. Um, bolts go down on that air defense over there that I predicted. And then he's now at this point, it's just kind of a, a patient waiting game. He does have another rage in his pocket. Heaven forbid he does run into another situation where he needs to burn them. Uh, but right now the AQ has, can easily stay up Archer tower and an expo both on her. And he trades that out with an archer to, or the cannon and an expo. And so that's the same amount of DPS coming in at your queen. So if you can survive an expo and an archer tower, you can survive an expo and a cannon. Uh, second rage goes down does unfortunately miss his healer, so I assume we're going to see an ability pop here. There it is. Um, if that he if those healers were in the rage uh, the rage spell, um, he probably could have gotten away with saving his ability. Um, showed a really nice heads up play by popping that ability. Uh, Lava hound pops. Uh, poison goes down to slow down the pups. Really nicely done there. And now at this point, uh, that minion is a fucking champion. Still doing work all the way up there um, from earlier in the raid, just picking off buildings. Uh, this AQ's got a lot more work to do. I'd assume that at some point you could start the dragons. There they go. Um, so I might have been a little little late with that call. Uh, but they are down because he knows that his queen, uh, without an ability, is still going to be able to punch through kind of these lower hit point defenses. Most of the storages are now gone. Is going to lock onto that final elixir storage. Um, but the dragons are down. They've taken care of the enemy queen. Um, and at this point, it's just basically a race. Uh, will the dragons come in range of the CC or the the air defense first, or will the queen take him out? Uh, queen has got a Tesla and an Archer Tower on her. 
uh, is getting close to going down here. She actually might, unfortunately, lose this race because I think he's lost one or two healers during this process. Um, I do think that queen's going. One of these days, she was a champion. She tried, uh, but that unfortunately, that air defense is not going to go down. But it looks like he just has plenty of dragons. So there's seven max, uh, or excuse me, seven level four dragons uh, coming on in. Two seeking air mines go off to take two dragons down to low health, um, but just ultimately the three seeking air mines. So he hits a lot of seekings, uh, but the pathing of those dragons easily lets them allow, easily allows them to get into there to that air defense. Um, and then after that, the Archer Tower here doing a ton of tanking, or excuse me, the King's doing a ton of tanking for the Archer Tower. Um, and ultimately, is just going to kind of power through that base. Um, so really fun to watch that attack. It's definitely something new, and it definitely gives the air guys another uh, kind of attack in their toolkit. Because um, these kind of these La Loons are something that I see Todd do a lot really well. But that attack seems to have some legs to it. Something that we should explore uh, a little further as time goes on. I'm going to go ahead and check up. Oh, people need troops rising. Take notice. I'm going to go ahead and be Jewish and only give Dragonfire some barbs. I'm going to give Kamal my poison because he needs it. I'm going to back out. I'm going to start another poison in case someone else needs it. So once again, rising. Just take notice. Don't be, don't be mean. It's not cool. All right. Let's get back to going. Uh, let's get watch. Blah, let's watch Edgar take out the enemy eight and see what he brings. Edgar, usually an air guy, is indeed going to bring probably looks like an old fashioned cold blood. It could be even a penta. I'm noticing that um, I'm assuming this was a cleanup attack. I should actually just I'm going to go ahead and back out real quick as I'm recording um, and kind of just write down which ones are fresh and which ones are not fresh, um, just so I know. Uh, so this one was a fresh hit by Edgar. The one that we just watched from Nick where he had we had to kind of drop that early rage spell was also a fresh hit. The one by Grave was a fresh hit, and then Danny was a cleanup. Um, so let's go ahead and write this down. So 9 is going to be a cleanup. 10 is fresh. 11 is cleanup. 12, 13, and 14 are all cleanup. I'm not sure how far I'm going to get with all these, but I figure I'll write them down anyway. Um, I'm going to go down to some of the Town Hall 8s. I know they want some love. Uh, so let's see, 25 and 26 were all fresh. 27 was a cleanup. 28. Wait, is that a 3-star from Hibby? Well, that's just weird. Oh, you know what? I think Onyx had the uh, had his account because Hibby, unfortunately, um, had to step away for a few wars. Um, so I hope, hope you're well, buddy. Uh, but that makes a lot more sense of why there is a 3-star there. Um, all right, so let's get back into this attack uh, by Edgar. Uh, fresh hit by Edgar is bringing, like I said, I think it's a cold blood, so he doesn't know what's in the clan castle. I'm also experiencing a little bit of a delay on my recording, so I'm going to wait for that to kind of catch up here, hopefully. If not, I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. I might stop this recording and just kind of get a part one, part two. Um, oh, nope, okay, there we go. So it looks like we're, we're good to go here. Um, so without knowing what's in the clan castle, I think you have to bring a golem. If you knew that there was a, a lava hound in it, you might be able to get away with a penta here, but I assume on a fresh hit uh, that this is a cold blood attack, bringing two rage, five haste, and a poison, and then the traditional four hounds and 14 loons. So let's see kind of how Edgar attacks his base. There is a lot of um, high HP storages around this queen, uh, so I think he's going to hope that his, his king kind of gets in there. Um, he does have three wall breakers, so his wall breaker game has to be on point. Drops a very quick poison, which is perfect because it encapsulates the enemy queen. Uh, gets a nice funnel down with some wizards. Beautiful rage spell. Uh, did not consider that myself at first. Um, drops a rage spell so the queen can have, can burn through a lot of these high HP storages. Get through that clan castle. There goes the king. The wall breakers had already busted in the wall. So right there, the enemy queen is already down and his heroes are both untouched. So that is gorgeous. Uh, working on this uh, this compartment here, easily going to be able to get the air defense in that compartment. And then from that point, guys, it's it's a pretty traditional um, cold blood Lalu, and I assume we're going to start up here on the left because this sweeper here was pointed kind of in a way that makes it so that you can't come in from the right. Uh, so drops two lava hounds on the first air defense and is going to haste his balloons into uh, into that first initial air defense. There are some Teslas in the core. The queen's going to kind of take care of those after she takes care of that expo. Uh, ability has already been popped, and she's just going to knock out that Tesla, which is going to help his loon pathing. Um, and then at this point, he's just sprinkling in hounds kind of as we go, one at a time, two loons on all the defenses. 
um, hasting his loons into. Notice that the positioning of the haste bell is kind of exactly the way that I would kind of uh, assume that it would work. You're not looking, in like if this was a rage spell, you're, you're usually with the bigger radius, you're trying to propel it kind of further into the base. Here, you're just trying to speed the loons up. Uh, they don't have any extra damage. Um, so just, I think that's a really, really well-placed uh, haste spell. Uh, loons coming in, knocks out the mortar. Notice that they re they maintain the ability of the haste even though they're outside the radius. Uh, so that's really good. And then final haste, final haste spell goes down. You got pups cleaning all the way over, all over the place. Uh, wizard down kind of in the perfect spot there. Um, so really, really great attack by Edgar. Um, Good job. A lot of a lot of error attacks, kind of showing to be the MVP of this war. Um, not a lot of hog hog action up top, so the hog guys need to step it up because AQ hogs is still a thing. Um, but really good job by all these air guys so far. All right, so I'm about 20 minutes into this recording. I'm gonna keep on going. Son of Jay did end up hitting nine cleanup, and that was the fourth hit. So we're not gonna look at nine because Son of Jay does have access to five spells. Um, so he should be able to clean up all the Town Hall 9s at this point. Uh, Edgar going in and actually switching approaches. So Edgar, one with air, one with hogs. A beautiful uh, example of kind of a well-rounded uh, attacker here. Uh, bringing a, looks like an AQ walk goho, um, possibly a stone goho here. Has one rage spell in his composition. Interesting that he has the jump, uh, just because the AQ is kind of not even in a compartment at this point. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of approach he takes. A uh, couple of double bomb spots. You kind of assume that you have to, to work around this one, kind of a huge one, just because there's so much non-defense is kind of all around it. Although you can easily single trip that uh, by going up there. And then same kind of thing down here. You can easily simple, single trip that. Um, so let's go ahead and see how Edgar kind of takes this base out. Let's see where he starts the queen. So we're actually going to start with the golem first. Uh, come in, and looks like he's going to do like a simple uh, BK trade. Uh, very nice. Notice that this AQ is not three spaces away from the wall, so she does jump into this compartment. Uh, so didn't need the jump spell there. He already knew that, though. Uh, Golem doing all the tanking. Level 30 queen e easily takes out the queen, and then also takes out that entire compartment. So that was great, great value. Uh, let's see where the rest of this attack is happening. More minions to, to do the funnel creation process up top, so that's great. Uh, army camps go down. Uh, Lava Hound did pop out of the clan castle, and he's going to allow that to walk on his king, um, and which is interesting because this is actually, according to my notes, it's a fresh hit. Um, so it looks like he planned for a possible double poison if it was a dragon and two loons, but he kind of planned this attack to be a split hero attack. Um, so just really high level planning here from Edgar understands that that Lava Hound can sit on that king all day. So lots of different stuff happening here. I'm just going to keep zooming out because uh, there's stuff happening over at 3 o'clock and there's stuff happening all the way over at 10. And so he knows at this point that he doesn't have to worry about his king anymore. He's already popped the ability. Um, so just kind of watching his queen, trying to remove as much pathing to potential double spots. Uh, there was another one right there that he just removed, and that queen is now going to be through that wall and go further remove that one. Um, so now at this point, it looks like the queen is going to kind of come on in uh, he's gonna do. He's gonna drop those wall breakers and squeeze in, but the queen is just gonna be through the wall at the very end of it. Um, skeleton trap pops. Uh, another golem going. Another two more golems. This is so interesting. Uh, watching this deck, unfortunately, a little late on his golems because those expos kind of come in range of his queen. Uh, there goes a single bomb. Uh, AQ is still doing. I'm really curious why those golems are there You're coming into the core. Very very interesting attack here, especially for a first hit. Uh, Rage goes down on his queen. Uh, hogs are going to start coming, sprinkling in on the right. All the tanking is being done by those two hogs that came in late. Um, this is probably going to be my favorite attack of the war, hands down. Uh, so now at this point, if we look at kind of what he has left, there's another trip right there. Uh, I'll pause it here in a second. I'll pause it right here. So right here, he's got nine hogs in the bag, two heels, and you can easily see he's kind of got two compartments of stuff to do. His queen is still kind of full health. Uh, so at this point, it's almost just a matter of time. Uh, matter of time speaking in terms of uh, time in the attack, three and a half minutes. Um, so it has three wizards. I assume there's going to be a wizard that goes there. There's going to be a wizard that goes over here eventually, and then maybe one also down here. Um, but still trying to keep that lava hound from popping. So let's watch the rest of the attack here, uh, see where these other nine hogs come in. Heal spell goes down while those hogs are tanking. Uh, really, really well done there. The other hogs come in. Um, 
I'm now realizing that you guys are seeing a frozen screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the screen to catch up. I'm going to watch the rest of this attack, and then I'm going to stop the video just to make sure that we preserve this content. I apologize uh, for the, the laggy connection. Uh, hogs go down here. You guys are now live. Um, taking care of this compartment. Still has one final heal spell and only one a uh, little compartment to go. So it looks like he's going to swag this final heal spell. Um, so just a tremendous, tremendous attack by Edgar uh, on base 10, uh, especially for a fresh hit. Um, lots of different things going on in that attack. Very high level attack. It's going to end up swagging uh, one heal and two poisons. Um, just a great, great job, man. Two real high level attacks um, in the top 10 and very oddly placed uh, swag spells. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a picture or what that's supposed to be. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video just because I'm having some recording issues. I'll probably try and record a part two to the rest of the Town Hall 9 attacks, and then maybe I'll do one for the Town Hall 8. So kind of a three-part uh, war recap series for this harder war that we had. Um, so thanks for watching part one. Uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff down at the bottom. Uh, let me know what you guys liked, what you guys didn't like, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. All right.